It's the Vermont Dog Trainers Show. Nobody's ever interviewed a dog. My wife is at the kitchen sink. I don't just walk up and shoulder her out of the way. I'm still a federal agent, Ian. Putting your arm up to your elbow <laughs> inside of a cow didn't appeal to me. You were shot three times. There are just some dogs that are sociopaths. Yeah, I've listened to every episode. Holding that squirt bottle like a 357. That's a really good question. I think that's probably one of the more accurate statements I've heard in a while, Ian. Shut up and train the dogs, man. Vermont dog trainer Ian Grant picks the brains of dog trainers across America. Listen as he tackles owner concerns on talking dogs. Join him for Chit Chat, a behind-the-scenes look at running Vermont dog trainer. The Vermont Dog Trainer Show is your common-sense, down-to-earth advisor on all things dog training. Now, here's your host, Ian Grant. Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, owner of Vermont Dog Trainer, VMW Drive Hyde Park. It's the show that delves into the training, socializing behavior, and nutrition of your dog. And brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And by Good Dog Grooming. They are the professional groomers across from the post office in Morrisville. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant. And today, a popular misconception has been alleviated from me now. Now, because here I thought, well, dogs know how to swim. You don't teach a dog how to swim. But no contraire. How do you know whether your dog needs to know how to learn how to swim? Well, I think there's a safety precaution to it. Yeah. You know, making sure that they do know how to swim. My big dog, Maddie, the first time I brought her out into the lake, she she looked like a motorboat with the, the back end was <laughs> down. She was trying to walk. The front end was up. She's slapping the water. You know, she just didn't have it in her at that time. But... The flip side of everything is sometimes, and I've seen it done on video before, you could take a very small dog like a chihuahua, hold it up in the air over a cup of water, and you'll see their feet start to go like they're getting ready to swim. Mm-hmm. So obviously that's the instinct that, you know, it's ingrained in most dogs. I, I think I I think it's fair to say. So really, this is the time of year, right? We want to keep our dogs cool. We want to be able to, you know, get them out, maybe do some swimming so important to go slowly and i would also try to find what motivates your dog if it's food if it's a toy is it you getting them used to just wading around in the water where they're walking with you know they can be you know the water's up their legs up to their chest finding that threshold where they're not so comfortable trying to use motivation from there and look your dog doesn't have to swim the very first time that you do this either you know just getting them used to the water is a start getting them to go in the water to walk in to come back out to go in to come back out and then slowly if you need to use the leash you can slowly just incorporate them to get just off their feet a little bit and then bring them right back into the shore again super important that they also know the way out as well because that's where the safety comes into play as well So if I've been a bad dog parent over the last 35 years, I have never taught one of my dogs ever to swim because I just figure, well, they can, you know? And, of course, some of our dogs like the water better than the others, like our current dog, Tika, Mm -hmm. doesn't want to be near the water at, at all. So if you have a dog like that, I mean, do you actually put them in the water? I mean, you put them in the water to cool them off, but do you try to get them to uh to try to swim you can and and look i you know i grew up with dogs we didn't try to make them do any of that stuff it's just if they if they could they could if they didn't they didn't you know with dogs that are smaller it's always good to show them the way out first so dogs that are smaller that you can carry i would walk out a little bit get them to where they can't quite touch hold them in the water so you're providing the support just like what you're doing with a little kid Let them swim and then show them the way in so they know every time. And then repeat that. Let them go all the way into shore. You can treat them. You can reward them, whatever you want to give them. Pick them up. Bring them back out. Do it again and do it four or five times. And then call it good because otherwise you can exhaust them too. But showing them the way out is the safety part of it. And look, if your dog doesn't know how to swim, it's not the end of the world. You know, Some dogs don't. But I know there's a number of people that definitely come across my radar that are always asking how to do this. And it's important to go slow because you don't want your dog to – you don't want to affect the relationship with your dog. Meaning if you use force to do this over and over and over again, 
your dog's going to look at you like, I don't know if I want to follow your direction anymore. And you don't know if they'll ever want to go in the water again either. Exactly, exactly. So we have to just kind of figure out, okay, is this something that we want to create with our dog if they don't know how to swim? Is this something that we don't want to create? Some dogs... You know, jump into pools and rip pool liners and, he, you know, that can be a nightmare. So if that's the case, then you create those boundaries. But otherwise, it's it's just another way to keep our dogs cool. And it's good exercise, too, for some of those older dogs that uh, need some a little bit more with their joints and stuff to kind of keep limber. But it is imperative, even for dogs like uh, Tiku, who doesn't like the water, it's kind of imperative to cool them off to get them in the water. But on the other hand, you don't want to force them to do anything beyond. So just bringing them in, maybe just... Putting water over them might be the best way if they if they're not that uh, comfortable being in the water. Yeah, I mean, look, we've got kitty pools at, at at work, and I think in the span of about three or four weeks, I think we've had maybe three dogs that will actually lie down in the water. Mm-hmm. So they like it on their feet. Some dogs are not a big fan of lying down, and and if we want to cool them off, then we'll splash the water up on their belly a little bit. Because that's the next step for them to get wet, right, when they kind of right. lower themselves down. So if we can get them cooled off in that area, it might make them a little bit more inclined to lie down. If it mm-hmm. doesn't, it doesn't. They're happy right. cooling off their feet. Right. But uh, keeping them cool, but they don't have to enter the Olympics. No. <laughs> by any means. Back with our question from the doggy bag in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Back with Talking Dogs with Ian Grant. Go to his website, vermontdogtrainer.com, to find out more. And uh, on his uh, website, you can also find a podcast and copies of this very program if you want to indulge in uh, getting caught up in some of the uh, some of the programs, either here or Ian's other podcasts. And you actually have an actual site for the podcast, right? Yeah, it's on our website. So it's vermontdogtrainer.com. And then just click on the podcast page and happy listening. <laughs> yes. Enjoy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Our question this morning, Ian, is I can't get my dog out of the driveway on leash before the polling starts. What can I do? So the dog is already sh- trying to uh, set the pace and you've got to set the rules. Yeah, set the pace is a good term because yeah. it is. They're they they're kind of raring to go. Mm. Uh, I'm going to use, so to me, the end of the driveway is kind of the threshold here. So if, if everything's going well in the driveway, they hit the end of the driveway and the pulling starts, I'm actually going to slow down and back up a little bit. So as soon as the pulling starts, I'm walking back in the driveway. I might take, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds to let the dog just kind of settle, and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to walk out of the driveway wait till the pulling starts, turn around, come back in the driveway, hopefully extending that period of time that I can have that dog uh, listening to me on leash. So as I've said before on this show and a lot of my other stuff is don't think about the destination, just think about time. So if you have 30 minutes for your walk and you're spending 28 minutes doing this, right, then maybe there's just two minutes left that you do it one more time and then you go back in the house and then you're all done. Do not think about, I have to get down to that mailbox. I have to go down there. Uh, Your dog is not thinking about that. Your dog is thinking about the present, the now. How can I pull my owner down the road (laughs) and get to where I want to go? Take the time and work this threshold. I always tell people, you know, the threshold can move. The, The end of the driveway may turn into a block down the street, or it may turn into somebody's driveway down the street before the pulling starts. But if we can't practice and master the things at home, then we shouldn't be taking our dog further down away from home if we can't control them to start with. So, so that's similar to what we talked about a number of weeks ago, where they get so excited when they're in the house, and when they get too excited, you put the leash down and you don't do it. So this is just like a step further. You're at, Now you made it to the driveway, but if you don't go any further, then... You don't go any further. You know, I feel time. I feel proud right now because you, you nailed it. That was great. <laughs> You're learning. <laughs> Look at this. Three years. Well, I know. I'm just I'm just uh, elaborating on last week's show where yeah. I, I had the list. So, all right, check that off. I know how to do that. But, yep. but I really failed on the swimming part. I really thought dogs <laughs> knew how to swim. But I did learn some, so I learned a few things. Yeah, right. and that was great. It's all about <laughs> taking that state of mind and just taking it to a different place and practicing it there. So, yeah, right. that was great. If you have a question for Ian, you can email him directly, ian at vtdogbnb.com. Well, next week, the topic is keeping your dog engaged. No bre- So we're not breaking the engagement. No, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not calling try- it off. <laughs> we're not calling it off. But when you mean keeping your dog engaged, you mean... 
including them in what you're doing throughout the day, not to the point where we have to have them tied to our hip. But I think it's also important that your dog is wanting to engage you at times other than, let's say, the walk or feeding or trying to come over and, and make you pet them, those kind of things. So we're we're going to uh, talk about that a little bit and dig in and, and uh, hopefully shed some light on the subject. Keeping them part of our lifestyle. Yes. All right. Yep. On Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard, with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans, and by Good Dog Grooming, there on Portland Street in Morrisville, right across from the post office, 11 years of professional grooming. And for the trainer, Ian Grant, I'm Roland Joy, and we are Talking Dogs. so much for listening to this episode of the Vermont Dog Trainer Show. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. For up-to-date information, visit Vermont Dog Trainer Show on Facebook. Until next time. Set up and train the dogs, man. 